All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and then we will get started in just a second. All right, can you see my screen okay? Yep. All right, perfect. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Just a, a couple of quick reminders. You are welcome to unmute yourself if you have some questions or comments, or we are also going to have a question and answer session as soon as uh, we wrap up with the information that I provide in this workshop. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are today are talking about the uh, ultimate desire and idea for a lot of seniors who want to stay in their home. And today's workshop is designed to help you, whether it's something that you are thinking about for yourself or you are thinking about this for maybe some of your loved ones or family members, are uh, to help you understand what are some of the questions that you should be asking yourself or you are a loved ones on, is this the right move for you or not? Or maybe there here are some, some questions that you uh, should consider uh, to kind of digesting and um, processing. So please allow me to introduce myself. Um, I am Olga St. Pierre. I am a real estate agent with Keller Williams and I am a senior living specialist. Our team works with a lot of seniors and their family members. And this workshop is actually part of our senior series. Uh, we share and we do uh, quite a few sections on anything from overview on how to get started, what are some of the questions and things, up to the last things in terms of what are some of the senior options, what happens, who do you need to talk to. So we encourage you and we'll share you our, the link to you to some of the other series in our workshops that we plan on having this month and in the months ahead as well. So just a little bit about me. I have been serving clients in New Jersey and Pennsylvania for the last 12, going on 13 years. Our practice focuses on um, clients in that area. However, we do have a, an extensive network of other agents that work with seniors and families in pretty much anywhere in the United States and Canada. And our, our hope and our mission is to help you and your family members to make the move as stress-free as possible with the resources that we have and the contacts that we have in the community. And um, a part of that resource group is our concierge service. We have state-of-the-art marketing plan and recommendations for contractors and anyone that you can think of that, that you and your family members that may need help, think of us as virtual yellow pages pretty much from A to Z. So we encourage you to reach out to us and let us know if there's something that you're thinking about and you have questions or you need help on, please don't hesitate to reach out to us because we're here to help you. So let's jump right in and let's get started with our workshop. The plan for today is uh, to, that's consists of a couple of things. Uh, why to consider staying in your own home? I'm also gonna give you some questions and some food for thought. Um, of course, how to, do we make plans? What are some of the financial considerations? And what do I suggest that you should do next? So number one, I want to applaud you for being on this workshop. A lot of the times when I'm working with families, they're trying to make these plans too late. And what I always suggest when I work with seniors and their family members is that it's never too early to make plans for what is going to happen during yours or your loved one's golden years. So I, I reiterate this, this throughout uh, this workshop and some of the other workshops when working with seniors, and I encourage you to do the same. So let's jump right in. I can tell you that a overwhelming majority of my clients that I work with and the statistics that I have researched when I designed this workshop originally, 
is about 76% over the age of 50 are stating that they would love to stay in their home throughout their golden years. And that is a, a good decision and a good food a kind of food for thought because people are comfortable in their homes, lots of, lots of memories that are attached to to the home, right? They really raised their family there. Maybe they, you know, they have their friends there and they say, you know what? I am comfortable here. I loved it here. I, I have memories here and I want to stay here. And again, plans should be made long before it becomes apparent that maybe it's too difficult to, for you to start climbing stairs or stepping into the bathtub. This is what I mentioned to you is some of the questions that I'm going to ask you. So let's talk about some of the truths that you're going to have to ask yourself when you say to yourself, I really want to stay in your home, okay? So number one, my current home will be the best possible place to live in my post-retirement years. And here's what I want you to think about is that your ideal home has evolved throughout the, your years. So in your early 30s, or maybe when you got married and you started a family, you had one idea of your ideal home. You wanted to have a big yard because you were planning on having kids. You wanted to have a place to plant a garden, right? You wanted to have a nice, big, spacious home. So that way each of your kids had a bedroom. You wanted to entertain. So you wanted to have large living room and large dining room. Well, think now, fast forward to 30 years later or maybe even more, and now this big house, it may be too much for you to clean and take care of. Maybe a lot of things now need repair, and that big yard in the back of your home is now too much to take care of, okay? So think about what the ideal home used to be, and now I'm inviting you to think about what your ideal home is today, right now. Right. Your kids may have already moved out and have homes of their own and they have their, their own kids. What does that ideal home look to you, to you right now? I encourage you, just like in my other workshops that um, other, uh, other uh, workshops that you may have attended, I'm a big believer in using notebooks. So I always have one with me. And I encourage you to do the same thing as we are going through this workshop. Write down some of the ideas that maybe you're taking away and also write down these questions and some of the thoughts that come to your mind when I'm asking you these questions. The next one is my current home is the best option to continue an active social life and to stay connected with my friends in the years ahead. And I want you to think about it this way. You may be thinking this is a great idea for you, but you don't know what your friends are thinking. They might be in the position where their health is failing and they may need uh, help soon. And maybe they want to, be, to move into a community that has more of a community features where they don't have to take care of their yard. They don't have to worry about cutting grass or taking care of snow in the winter. So what you think may be an act of social life and staying connected with your friends may not be the same goal as what your friends have. Maybe they don't want to stay in their home. home. So my suggestion to you is have an honest conversation with your friends and ask them, what are your plans? What are you thinking about doing? Where ideally would you want to spend your golden years? The next question is, it's less expensive and more financially secure for me to stay in my current home. And I hear this quite often because a lot of my clients may say, well, Olga, I don't have a mortgage anymore. I don't have to worry about making a big payment. And what I invite you to think about is, remember your home is one of the biggest financial invest investments that you have made. I want you to think about some of the big ticket items in your home that are now maybe 40, 50, 60 years old, right? Because your home ages along with you. You still have monthly expenses in order to maintain your home. And now I want you to remember and maybe look through your records to see when was the last time you replaced your roof, your uh, central air and your furnace? How old are your windows? How old is your siding? These are all very expensive big ticket items that a lot of the times, if you have to replace a leaky roof, you have to do it right away because otherwise it's going to cause more damage to your home. And you know, a roof can cost you ten, twenty thousand dollars, or even more, depending on the square footage of your home. A lot of the times, you have to pay, make that payment for that project in two payments, right? You do your 
your deposit of 50% and then you pay the rest of the, of the job when it's over. So I'm going to share with you a budget spreadsheet that you can, you can create and it's going to give you food for thought just to make sure that you're not forgetting what are the true expenses of you staying in your own home because it's extremely important and it will help you make your decision whether staying in your own home is the right move for you. Well, the next one is it'll be easy for me to get care I need at home. I can tell you that coordinating care at home can be difficult, costly, and unreliable. You have to remember that you have a couple of doctors most likely to coordinate with. Then if you have a home care agency where you need someone to come to your house to provide your care, maybe give you shots, or maybe uh, provide you with some personal care or nurse care, everything has to be coordinated. Everything has to go through the insurance company. Or if there's uh, money that you would have to pay outside of your insurance, all of it has to be coordinated. It's all a lot of paperwork, lots of phone calls. And I can tell you, honestly, it's a lot of work and often frustrating because there's so many little pieces that are involved. And we don't want you to forget any of those pieces because having a medical plan and the care plan to make sure that it's comprehensive and covers every aspect that you need is very important. All right. Next question is, we're actually going to talk about some of the big questions, and I invite you to be extremely honest with yourself, okay? Because this is what this workshop is about, is asking honest questions of yourself and sitting down and truly thinking through these answers. Number one, is your home fit and safe for you? This is one of the biggest questions that I, I invite you to ask yourself. Because if you have lots of steps, if you have, if you don't have enough lighting, if you have tripping hazards, if you, if your hallways are not wide enough, you may have issues being able to stay in your home. We provide you with a home safety assessment that is critical to help you determine what modifications may be needed in your home and is your home safe the way it is. Okay? which by the way, falls are the leading cause of death for seniors who are 65 and older. And quite often as a result of the fall, many seniors have to go into rehab. And after a stay in the rehab, it's determined that they may not be able to actually go home. And that's when the family is faced with the decision of having to um, make a quick decision, which can often be costly of putting a senior into a um, assisted living or maybe even a nursing home some kind of facility because the senior needs help. So during the home safety assessment, we cover every single piece that you need to consider of your home being safe outside and inside. And some of the things that we talk about are the safety features in your home, important technology that will help you be safe in your home, like exterior and interior cameras, having Alexa and Google Home so that way you can call for help and having security system. And I have some of the pictures here as examples of what we talk about and what's included in your home safety assessment. I invite you to either request the assessment, you can do it yourself if you want to. And of course, we are also happy to help you and do it along with you. The next uh, topic that we talk about is, um, as part of your home assessment, we also talk about all the things that you have accumulated on, the year, on all the years that you have lived in your home. One of the topics is your furniture. And I invite you to think about what you have in your own home and how is this going to affect your living in the future. Because the more furniture you have, the more tripping hazards that you can have when potentially you may need more space because you might need to have a walker down the road or maybe even a wheelchair. So what we also talk about is when you have too much furniture is how do we create a safe room by room flow? And what that means is that you can safely navigate the room. You don't have a lot of things. You don't have a lot of tchotchkes that can fall and then um, accidentally you know, have an issue for you to fall, okay? Um, room by room floor plan. Each room inventory, what are the things that we're going to keep that maybe give to family, sell and donate? That's actually part of our decluttering plan, okay? And of course, ultimately you just have to remember 40 years worth of stuff, you are going to have to pare down and downsize. And I don't want you to think about what you're doing is downsizing. I want you to think about it as, as right-sizing. Just like your home 
was the right move for you in the beginning of your life together. Right now, you have to decide on what are the things that you need right now, okay? The things that you are enjoying and you are definitely using, the things that you don't need, that you are overwhelmed with, the things that are collecting dust and a potential uh, tripping hazard for you. So when we are decluttering and we are making these options and putting items in categories, I also invite you to think about if you need help, right? Remember, you don't have to do this yourself. If you don't have family or friends to help you do this, we can help you find those that can help you in, in our community, okay? So organizers can help you, people to just, you know, some muscle to help you maybe hold items up from the basement or from the attic to take it down. If you have some antiques, we have appraisers that can help you kind of figure things out. And some of those people can also help you sell the items that you no longer need. Um, what we also talk about is setting mini goals and scheduling appointments with yourself to get this work done. So that way you are doing and making progress a little bit at a time. Uh, we invite you to attend our declutter workshop where we talk in more details on how do you make the, uh, the right size with your things and help you and make sure that you understand that it does not have to be overwhelming. Next, if you still feel that you want to stay in your home, but there's some modifications that are needed, we help you create a home modification improvement list. So that way, what you can do with that list is then um, ask three to four contractors and get some estimates for the work that needs to be done. We're actually heading in the right season right now. I always recommend for this work to be done like late fall and winter. This is when the good, good contractors are not as busy as they usually are in the spring and summer. And you can actually get them on the phone, have them come out, provide you with the estimates of the work that you need to be done to make sure that your home is safe for you. The one thing that I want you to remember that when you are working on the improvement list is that it takes time to get the contractor out. It takes time for that contractor to come back with an estimate for you. So it takes time to, co to collect three to four estimates so that way you can understand what that pricing looks like and this is something that's affordable to you. And then it takes time for them to get permits to actually schedule the work. So if you think that this is something that may happen in a couple of months, it's probably not going to. I want you to budget at least four to six months for some of this work if the work in your home is going to be somewhat extensive. And then of course, the financial part of this, you'll be surprised how much more the prices have gone up right now for materials as well as for labor. Uh, be prepared for sticker shock. And then it's time for you to decide, does this make sense for you to do financially and still stay in your home? or does it make sense to potentially go into a different direction? This is the budget sheet that I mentioned already to you. When we're talking about making financial considerations and deciding it is what is the right move for you, staying or maybe looking into something else, I am happy to send you this spreadsheet and share this with you via email or send it to you in a print format so that way you can sit down and jot down some of the numbers and some of your thoughts. Okay, so number one, you're going to review your current income and your current expenses. If you still have a mortgage, what percentage of your monthly income is your mortgage? Okay, the goal is really to be under 35%. Does your mortgage payment leave you enough money for your other needs? Okay, and then this is where we talk about different options. Is there a potential for you to, if you, if you still want to live in your own home, is there a potential for you to sell the bigger home and move into a smaller home, right? If you have a colonial right now, potentially moving into a rancher where it's all on one floor living so you don't have to worry about steps might be a good option for you, right? Um, this is, is remaining in your current home and looking at your expenses may make sense for you to reduce some of your expenses. This is something that you can look through and make a decision. And we, of course, can help you with some suggestions and points as well. Other financial considerations. I want you to think about where the funds will be coming for financing the renovations and also con to continue your living during your golden years. Do you have personal savings and investments, right? And this is where we do involve some of our professionals and to help you uh, further and make sure that you 
extend the life of your savings in your finances as long as possible. If you have a financial advisor, if you have an attorney to help you do those things, that's great. If you don't, we're happy to make some recommendations. If doing a reverse mortgage or home equity conversion mortgage on your home may be an option for you, and there are some considerations to do that, you have to be age 62 and older, and you can use the equity in your home for some of the things that maybe you don't have finances for, in home care, home modification improvements that we mentioned, a purchasing long-term care insurance. I have actually done a really good interview with a, a local reverse mortgage lender, and we talked about all the ins and outs of what the reverse mortgage is, because there's a lot of misconception that is out there. We also talked about who it's right for and who it's not right for. So I, in our follow-up email with this workshop, where I'm going to follow and um, provide you a link to this video as well, so that way you can watch it. It's been really popular with our clients on our YouTube channel. Medicare and Medicaid are an important part of your uh, financial and medical planning. It's critical to know and understand what Medicare covers and for how long. Okay, and also what Medicaid does allow for you. Most of the time, Medicaid is available for lower income individuals. There's low personal savings. And however, the process to get approved and considered under Medicaid is uh, very lengthy. It's even more lengthy right now because of the coronavirus. Next, we have health insurance and long-term care insurance. If this is something that you have and you want to make sure that you understand exactly what you can use those insurance for and also how long you have the coverage for, like especially in long-term care insurance as well. And also, how does long-term care insurance correspond with Medicare and Medicaid, right? Because we, you want to make sure that, again, you extend your resources for as long as possible. And also we don't want to forget for some for our veterans, there are great VA benefits that are available for qualifying veterans and their spouses. There's monetary assistance, there's supportive services. So I don't want you to forget that as something that may be available to you um, if you are a veteran or veteran spouse. And again, I, I put this line here and I just want to reiterate to you that this planning, all of this takes time. And even now, because of you know, what we've been going on for the last 18 years, 18 months, it's even taking more time. So I encourage you that if you don't think that there's something that matters to you right now, even if it's the next three to five years, I encourage you to ask these questions of yourself right now, because if you have to save up for your plans, for your considerations, and maybe the dreams that you have, you have to start now, okay? Because it takes time to make these decisions as well as to save up the funds. Next, we told, we're talking about, I need, we need you to consider your health and wellness. These are some serious questions that you need to sit down and ask yourself. And we have a questionnaire to go through where we touch upon and help you ask yourself these topics. What is your overall health is like? What are your concerns? You know, if you are feeling great right now, but maybe you talk to your doctor and your doctor warned you that, you know, some of your symptoms that are mild right now may increase and deteriorate down the road. And maybe he gave you a time frame, right? Is there something that you will have to, to be, to budget for and to be concerned about? Like, for example, performing daily activities means to travel. If you're not going to be able to drive your own car, you're going to have to have someone else take you to appointments to go to your social activities, things like that. And you need to write down and have a plan um, your, under your healthcare for your medical team. You need to make a list of all your doctors, your nurses, who is going to be helping you with your personal care if it's not now in the future, and the same thing for your nursing care. This way, if something happens to you, you're not able to take care of yourself and you're not able to express your wishes, someone in your family, that you have shared this information to is going to have your healthcare plan and they will know exactly the direction that you want them to take. Community social interaction, access to social interaction, what are the, what is available in your community? For example, adult daycare, of course you're going to need transfer for that. Are you comfortable with technology? Think about smartphones and tablets and video calls and we're talking about the technology 
if it isn't going to be in your home, are you going to be able to communicate with your loved ones? And of course, a lot of times loved ones may want to keep an eye out for you and technology is one of the best ways to do that. And I also want you to think about what are your passions? What are some of the things that really ignite the fire in your belly? Uh, you know, do you want to, to volunteer in your community? Do you want to create some kind of a group? For example, I have someone who uh, retired recently. She, they, she, they, they chose to downsize from their colonial home. They went into a 55 plus community and Lynn created a walking group in the community. So twice a week, they walk every morning and they just talk about anything and everything and they get their exercise. So that being well is important to her. And that's what she decided. She's like, Olga, I'm going to create that. And I think they actually have a garden club going as well. So I want you to think about what are your hobbies? What are some of the things that, are, that interest you? Maybe it's a, a book club or something similar that you may want to do on a regular basis um, that is important to you. And some other options is maybe something new to learn maybe volunteer and use your personal and professional connections. And if there's nothing available, that doesn't mean you can't start your own group and um, get uh, someone else, uh, other people involved with you. Sit down with your loved ones and have an honest conversation. This is huge. And I realized that it is just completely missing from many families' uh, interactions. Having an honest conversation with your loved ones is critically important. So number one, I encourage you to do this in person, not on the phone and not on Zoom. You need to sit down next to your uh, family and you need to have a serious conversation and you need to explain to them that this is a serious conversation that I want to have with you. And here are some of the framework for this conversation. Number one, you are going to have to get uncomfortable and tell everyone how you're feeling and what you want. Okay, what do you want them to know? Are you afraid? Are you starting to not feel well? You know, what, what are, you're going to bear your soul to your loved ones and help them understand where you stand. If you need help with maybe doing some of the right sizing and decluttering that we mentioned, maybe you need help creating um, a healthcare plan. Maybe you need help finding a doctor, right? Your family is there to help you, but if you don't tell them what you're looking for, they are not going to know what to how and what to help you with, okay? Uh, where to find your important documents. I hope that you have a place or some kind of a colorful tote or a box where you keep all of your important documents. In our declutter workshop, we talk about keeping those documents in, in a fireproof safe at home. If you don't feel comfortable about keeping it at home, you should have a, a um, safety deposit box that you can rent at a bank. And those documents are the things that you need to keep forever that you would be extremely upset if they were lost or damaged and they will be hard to replace, right? Think about government documents, your will, list of accounts, insurance policies, stock certificates, anything and everything that is important to you, uh, birth certificate, death certificates, VA benefits. We have a whole list that we can send you. All of those things should be in one place and easy to find. And if they are going to be in a safety deposit box somewhere in the bank, you need to provide instructions to your loved ones on how to get access to it. And if you want to designate one person to be responsible as a, um, a head or an executor, then that is what needs to be done as well, right? That is the next point, which is who will be in charge. And let's say it's your, maybe your sister or maybe it's your oldest child, you also need to ask their permission to make sure that they feel comfortable doing that for you. You don't want to put someone in a situation where they're going to be overwhelmed, where maybe they're too busy or they're not able to handle the job that you are asking them to do for you. Next, what, who is your team? And we're talking about the team besides your healthcare plan. This is the team that consists of your attorney, your financial advisor, your accountant. Everybody's contact information should be on there. And also, these team members should also have a contact information for your person in charge. You need to let your accountant know that my oldest son is going to be taking care of things for me in case if I'm not able to, here is his contact information, okay? And also, next is what are your wishes? And what I want you to think about is, for example, if you are on life support in the hospital, something happened to you, and you know, things can happen overnight, if you're on life support and you're not able to talk for yourself or make a decision, do you want your family members to continue to keep you on life support? 
Are you an organ donor? Do you want your organs to be donated when you pass away or you would prefer not to? These are very hard questions, yet they still have to be asked because believe me, when you provide your wishes and you tell your loved ones and your family exactly what you are looking for and how you want things handled, it's going to make it so much easier on them and give them a peace of mind knowing that they are doing as you have wished them to. And then you will have your financial plan and your health plan all available and ready to discuss with your loved ones. I encourage you not to skip this and have this conversation sooner than later, because again, you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. bring. And these conversations, although extremely difficult, believe me, will make everyone uh, feel better after this conversation took place. So here is what's next. I just want to... Uh, give you some food for thought. Again, grab a notebook and start writing down where you are now and what you want to accomplish. What are some of the things that are missing in your plan? Why do you want to stay in your home? Do you need to get a home safety assessment done? And if this is something we can help you with, we're happy to do that and it's absolutely free. Do you need copies of these documents that we can provide you with to help you in your planning for your golden years, whether it's to be able to stay at home or making a decision as much as hard as it can be that you're just not able to do so financially and your home is not ready for you and not going to be ready for you. So your, your budget sheet, the digital inventory sheet, our home safety assessment, room inventory, we have all these workshop, worksheets to help you make the best decision for yourself and your loved ones. And of course, if you are interested in, again, attending some of our other series uh, workshops in the senior series or helping you with decluttering, we have this running just about every month. So we always invite you to participate. Every workshop comes with a workbook. You are going to get a copy of this one as well as all the links that I mentioned to you to help you make the best decision for you and your loved ones. So this is what I have to share with you right now. And at this time, I invite you to ask your questions and see, I just wanna make sure that number one, what I provided you with is helpful. And two, if there's something else that maybe is on your mind, I am happy to answer or get the answers for you. All right, any, any thoughts? Well, I will say outstanding presentation, Jessica. I uh, was taking notes, actually. I would like to get some of the information you want to pass along. Got some oh. decisions to make about investing in uh, my personal home and doing renovations and how much to spend, et cetera. So. I think that a lot of people don't realize just how much is involved in the decision-making process and a lot of questions they don't think to ask themselves and their, and their loved ones and their family members are, are there and they have to be answered. So having some kind of a structure or checklist, I think is very helpful when you are trying to yeah. make these decisions. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you, Liz. I'm glad that you found this helpful. So we are going to wrap up if there are no other questions. And we will send you a link to a copy of this recording as well as this workshop. And again, if you want to speak to us privately, you will have our contact information and uh, we're happy to answer your questions in, in private via text message, phone call, or an email. Also looking into reducing taxes with the land transfer. Yep, so this is a definite question for an attorney and the accountant to see the best way of doing this to make sure that you are not having a tax burden for sure. I always recommend when you are trying to make plans that pertain to retirement and planning into the golden years, specifically talking to an estate, an estate planning attorney. That is what their focus and their specialty is. All right, well, I think this is it for now. Just wanna make sure as a, 
last opportunity, any questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself or type in the question. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for joining us. All right, so we're going to stop the recording. Again, thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. We hope that we found you found this helpful, and then we'll see you next time. Very good. All right, bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, all good. Thanks, Jessica. See you.